Can you talk a little bit about long-term, short-term contracts and how that Well, the... initially I said, let's just do it free agency. They'll all be so grateful. <laughs> okay, so one of the ones that, that we signed was Baby Blues. Anita had a very good eye for comics, and she picked Baby Blues. <clears throat> and that was a really successful comic. We made 250 sales in five years. And at the end of, when their contract was up, King Features offered them a $200,000 signing bonus. First time in, in the 100-year history of King Features they've ever paid a cartoonist a signing bonus. They've never done it before. I don't think they've ever done it since. But at that time, they gave Kirkman and Scott $200,000. And, and I remember Jeff Baby Blues you used to call me every morning and say, when I started, and you used to say, pretend that you have the far side 10 years ago. Go out and sell Baby Blues. Pretend you have, you know, in your mind... And I mean, I just, I was on a mission to sell baby boots. I mean, it was just all I did. As a sales manager, I'd always think of yeah. stuff like that. You know, like how grateful the editor would be if you persuaded him to buy Ann Landers. Because she, she was such a strong draw to readers. Um, so, but I remember with um, Baby Blues flying to the Frankfurt Book Fair. And I was very tired. I'd flown all night. And I was having lunch with Svante Sederblatt, who was our agent in, um, in Germany, in Frankfurt, Germany. And we're at lunch, and Svante says, I want to order champagne because I have great news. And we had just lost baby blues. We had just been told. Mm -hmm. I said, good, what's the great news? He said, I have signed baby blues to a $50,000 a year contract <laughs> for five years. <laughs> I said, it was great news for you, Svante, because he's still representing King. So he still got the sale. But we lost it. So after that, and we had had some others to Crankshaft and Sherman's Lagoon, where others had gone after them. And... I, I remember calling Johnny Hart saying, hey, John, these young guys are not appreciative the way you are, and we need to rethink this whole freedom thing and make it fairness. So we, have, we changed it. So our new contract, starting at that time, would say, okay, we, you can own your rights. We'll have a relatively short-term contract, but that's not fair if we don't have some sort of residual protection. And so I studied what do... What literary agents do? What do book publishers do? And I remember talking to Anita, and she used the word, we are a hybrid between a literary agency and a book publishing company. I thought that was a very intelligent way to put it. That we're, like a literary agent, we go out and sell the writer's works. But like a book publishing company, we edit it, we distribute it, we do the accounting for it, we, co we collect the money, we pay them a royalty. They don't pay us a commission. So in that sense, we're not like agents, we're like publishers. But so it's a hybrid between the two. So I said, well, why don't we do this? We'll have a paragraph basically giving us protection long term. So if we had made 250 sales for Baby Blues, we would, and they could be free to switch to King Features, but we would continue getting the commission on the sales we made for as long as those newspapers published Baby Blues. Just like a literary agent. If Stephen King has an agent who sells his book to Random House, and the shiny. <clears throat> and then King and the agent have a falling out, and King gets a new agent, and the new agent sells the next book to Simon and Schuster. That's fine. King has that freedom, and he should have that freedom. But he can't screw the first agent. Mm -hmm. That first agent still gets the payments, the commissions from the shiny, from the first publisher. And that was the model we used, so we have that now in our contract. 